The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians, out on the second day of May. My pleasure to be here. Dow's up 18 at 20,932. S&P is unsh at, ooh, let me see. It's a little difficult right now to see what it is. It's all in red. Uh, 2,388. Uh, this is very interesting. The futures are down three. <clears throat> Testing in the cup formation in the weekly chart. Uh, look, here's the daily chart to show you how it's struggling to do it. And it needs to get to 20, in the future is 23.97.50, and it breaks out to a new all-time high, and that completes that cup formation. 120-minute chart shows the struggle that's been going on. Look at this. Look at this rectangle trading band. Spikes just above it to the 23.94.75 high on the 26th all-time high. Comes back down. Goes a tad underneath a couple of times, 2378, then 2377, round number low. And then it rallies to 2390 yesterday and today, and then makes an arch formation, and it's really struggling. So, make it real simple. If I go to the uh, 10 minute chart right here, it's, oops, that's the goal, the GDX. I decided I would do that. This is what you really are looking at. The 10 minute chart suggests <clears throat> that a cl any 10-minute bar that closes under 23.81 any time today will suggest lower prices and any 10-minute bar that closes above 23.86.50 suggests that this very sharp decline, this ugly candle soon after the opening at about 9.50, uh, you will go into that and you can test 23.87.75. 2380, even try to the day's high. I think we're in a chop, chop, chop range right now. Just make it real simple. Uh, if you're looking, at, and the patterns seem to be unfolding pretty much as you would expect based on the on the formulas that we look at. Uh, here's the art formation again in the two-minute chart. Made a peak D over there and a peak D over here. Those peak Ds are are really powerful in the Chapman wave methodology, and I think we're going to be going lower. Now, let me run this because I didn't do it yesterday. I wasn't here yesterday. So let me just do this as if we're starting the week. I've got a lot of questions that were sent to me, and I'll try to get to them. Here we go. The Dow. INDU. The Dow is trading right now up eight at 20,921. It's had one, two, three, four. I won't count today because today's the fifth day and we don't know what the close will be. But the four red candles, but all within a very tight range. But yesterday, it did take out the low that was made. You've got the low of the gap up on the 25th of 20,909. Yesterday's low was uh, 20,898.38. Now, it's very interesting because I said to subscribers to my opening call, we want to start shorting the Dow, but only if it hits. And yesterday's number was 20,000. 890, right there, 20,898. 20, so we have started a short position in the Dow, even though it is so close at 21,169, all time high, for a couple of reasons. I, it could be completely wrong, but the way I'm looking at it is the Dow has had over six weeks in which to just make a, a little pop up over 21,169, and it's been unable to do that. Now, it might have used up time and not price, in which case, at some point very soon, it's just power right into the 21,280, 21,350 area. But if it's used up time as it's waiting for the leading sector to, to turn down, then we might find that the rotational correction is continuing. The Dow doesn't have the strength to make a new high, but it also hasn't got the strength to, or the weakness to, to break significantly under the 20,000 key level. We'll see about that. What's even more important is if I go through each sector, <clears throat> 
what we're looking at is within the context of 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 the market um the qqq which is the ndx 100 even today right here has made a new all-time high it has just been the, the absolute leader and that's taken it to this extended almost like a single leg up g slash c uh, um, f slash b in the weekly chart and all i can say is that everything about the technicals suggesting that within a few days there should be at least a short-term consolidation in the in the ndx 100 the qqq power shares series and this is the thing as it unfolds we will see whether or not now we have all ships on board facing south instead of just one facing north and the other's going sideways or south and that's going to be really uh, really important now let me show you something else in the s p sbx.x also six weeks and hasn't been able to break just at 2400 uh, 2401 to make an all-time high it's used up time but it has made the cup formation now in both the dow and the s p what i was really looking at is that the stochastic did turn up but from way down 69 percent and the magd looks like it wants to deflect lower so, so to me all the signs all the all the characteristics that i would look for for a failure pattern are in place um, the monthly charts are still very powerful. I don't even want to talk about them. The long-term trend, the major trend is still up. Now, this is going to be very interesting. Look at the IWM. The IWM trading at uh, 139.29, down 57 cents. Very unusual. It made a peak C all-time high. I have tried, I've tried every which way to count A, B. Yeah, every which way to count it. I, it nothing comes out. It has to be a, a, a blue C. In other words, that peak F at 140.86 on the 1st of March, that was a top. And this sneak just twice, it went above the uh, that level. So I'm calling this a C, and if it fails, it fails. It'll be one of the few cases that it, it, it fails at a C. It should go to at least a D, and then fails. So I'm keeping that in mind. And the weekly chart did make a leg D. So that everything's in place except for that one letter that I needed on a purely technical basis in the Chapman wave, um, and I needed a D. So we'll just be watching this closely. Let me do this quickly. The GC, the gold, down a tad at 1255. Um, I still think that gold is going to go a little bit lower. Uh, there's a pattern that I explained to my uh, subscribers this morning. It's in the GDX. It's called the um, Chapman Wave. There we are. Chapman Wave Stork Lake Formation. And that's suggesting that because the beak, this is still the beak, is continuing lower we've got to give it just a little more time be careful because when the chapman wave beak of the chapman wave stalk lake formation concludes it gives a really powerful spike to the upside and then you're on your own that spike can last six or seven or eight uh sessions and then you have to look for other patterns it's done its job so so far everything's accurate about what's going on the, the weekly chart has this h that goes to a lowercase m pattern and i'm looking at the dollar and the dollar really doesn't show very much strength at all look at this dxy the dollar is trading unchanged at 99.50 it just doesn't have strength but it's not breaking down but it is still under this major trend line I'll continue with this because I want to look at the TLT, which has a Chapman Wave beat formation coming in place. And we'll talk about that because that also, when it turns around, could be quite a sharp turnaround. I'll be back straight after this break. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. 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 Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Well, folks, so we'll continue. Just yes, that uh, two minute chart shows that the lowercase h pattern down sharply makes an arch formation, but it's still holding quite nicely in the sideways uh, pattern. Very short term, takes out 2383. And it'll test the low of uh, in the 281s. So let's continue here. So this is what I want to look at. The crude oil has this pattern that I call the Eiffel Tower. Straight up, straight down. It looks like an uppercase A. That's what the Eiffel Tower looks like, right? Uh, let's make that nice and big so you can see what we're looking at. I always make it red just to let it stand out. Let's go to 48. There we go. It looks like an uppercase A. And that says, as it's approaching the bottom part, the left side support levels, many things can happen. So that's where you have to watch the MACD is still negative in the crude oil continuous contract. <clears throat> you had a beautiful arch formation uh, in the stochastic. The unbalanced volume is not really showing any strength. I'm not even seeing the histogram improving. So I think that crude oil, really the 48 to 47 area is going to be critical to hold. It could start to form a base there and this is what that pattern sometimes it either starts just above in fact if i was doing uh larry's and thank you larry very much for doing my show yesterday if i was doing larry presavento's um uh, gartley's um i would be looking for something above slightly above the left side low to find support but in the meantime we'll just see uh the 49 if if crude oil in the next two days breaks 50.20 on the upside That'll be a sign that it's trying to form a base. Uh, if it just takes out the 47 support in the next two days, that's just that's not a good thing for crude oil at all, because that's the weekly chart arch formation from a peak C minus. Instance. A failure pattern at a peak C, not good at all. And there's the, this is a pattern I drew ages ago in the monthly. The lowercase h goes to lowercase m. It happens so many times. Keep that in mind as a template. Just keep it in mind, that's all. Um, okay, so the TLT. The TLT is the Lehman 20-year T-bond fund, and it, it forms a long leg, then the body, that oval body, breaks out, goes to the neck, goes to the head, 200-period exponential moving average, Chapman wave peak F, that's where if the technicals are failing, watch out, Fs can be real deathly, and it plummets down, and it's not yet taken out the low bar. Uh, the TLT is trading 121.21 up 13 cents. If it, it doesn't have to close, it just has to take out 120.21, and that says, be careful because this whole body becomes a resistance area. So this is the area that there needs to be. The stochastic is still not showing any support, and neither is the MACD. I think there may be one or two 
more bars down. And then I think the market, I think the Nasdaq starts to pull back by the end of the week. And I think that the TLT will find some support. The other thing is that the H to an M pattern is rife right here in the, uh, in the there's a schematic I drew months ago for the uh, TLT. And the monthly chart says, ho, ho, uh, nothing's very good here. Bonds had better hold because if the TLT takes out 115 support in the next month or two, that'll be the first time this major uptrend line support channel has been pierced. Okay. <clears throat> Wanted to do uh, euro dollar, USD, EUR, USD, dollar currency pair. And that's the same thing. This is gone. This is actually, I put in an up arrow. This should have been a plus sign. This should be a gray. And then the moment it broke to a new high, it does become a blue, but it becomes, I should have put it in here, G slash C, because that can G slash C. I have to put it in right. Oh, no, no, right like that. Okay. So, so euro dollar is moving nicely to the upside. Now it's having a high level consolidation. It went to a leg C in the weekly. And that's suggesting that that pattern that I said, the lowercase h goes to a lowercase m, when the right side of that second h takes out the left side, as long as it closes above, you can have a pretty big bounce in whatever you're following. And in this case, it means that the candle right there, the candle of November of 2016 to 1.129, is called one Let's call it 1.13. That's the area. That would be an upside target if, in fact, it's able to get above 1.11 1 .11 in the next week. That's going to be a big positive for me. We'll see. Okay, I'm leaving out something. Oh, I did the crude oil. I think I've done everything. So here's a question. Uh, two questions. One is, I had a question, uh, email from Jason Hi, Basil. Hope all is well. It has been a long time. I haven't been in the den in months, but wanted to ask about SPG and SC. Hey, everybody. Jason says hi in the den. Uh, I'm, I'm still long overall, but looking for my signals in case things go south during the next uh, six to eight. SPG. I was curious about SPG. What do you make of the chart? The uptrend has been broken. I know they're the biggest owner of malls in America. Not sure if it's my kind of signal or just more of a signal that Amazon and e-commerce have taken over from the mall sector. That's a, a very good observation. Let's look at SPG, because it's always on my list. Simon Properties, they, they're based, I think they're based here in Massachusetts, uh, but I know they have all the big ones. Um, here we go. A peak C minus, I technically this isn't the C minus because it hasn't taken out the left side. No, I'm just putting it in because it has the arch formation. <clears throat> SPG, Simon Properties trading at 168.59, only down two cents today. But it's had quite a bit of a dip from the 175 to test the 165 area. So normally what I would do is I do this right here. Yeah, I want to draw my H pattern in right there. And I still keep it to the right because we don't know if there is going to be further weakness or a, a bounce to make it an M pattern. What I'm really concerned about is that the weekly chart still shows weakness and the monthly chart has had two very ugly red candles in May, the, these two days, it's trying to find some support. If you see the stochastic at 12% in a monthly chart and the MACD is still very negative, I would just say to you that that's something to be very wary of. So that's yeah, a very yeah good observation. Now, where would I want to either buy or short SPG? Let's look at it as if we have no skin in the game, which we don't, and we, we want to do something. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying the MACD is down, but it's at the upper end of its range, which is different to when it was making its low right there back in the uh, 22nd of March, right down at 164, no, 163.55. Let me type that in so I don't have to keep looking. 163.55. All right. Then it rallies up to the 175, 176 area and then pulls all the way back to the 164.99 or something. What is that? 164, 164.88, 164.83. So it comes back to a lower low, but now it's starting to hold. The way I'm looking at this, it's made lower highs and lower lows. And until it can garner enough strength for the weekly chart 
to see the stochastic at 27% go to 33% and the MACD go back to positive, and that will probably take a move above 171 as a nine period moving average. So I'd say in the 172, 173 area, that'll say, okay, it could make another arch and it's maybe too late to buy because it's going to make another arch that should fail. I think that there's, it's trying to form a base, but I would not be surprised if that base takes out the all time low and that all time low. Will then suggest. Let me show you the something in the uh, in the. Oh, oh, this is the one that got. It, this is a new stock name, because SPG goes back a long time. They did something, and I can't remember what they did back in July, June of July of um, June or July of 2014. Uh, was that 14 or 15? Right there, in, uh, May. May of 2014, they did something and they they changed their name because I used to chart this and an amazing chart formation until it broke down. I, I'm going to talk about it just a little bit more. I'm going to talk about it in terms of also the retail, the RTH, which have a look. The retail index is actually closer to its all time highs and lows. Isn't that fascinating? And I'll explain something about it. We'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, hey folks. We're back, and we're going to go straight to Bob and Framingham. Bob, how are you? I am blessed, Basil. Doing very well. I just see your picture there. You look wonderful. Oh, uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good to hear. How are you doing? Well, good. I, I, I actually, I'd gotten some Windex and cleaned up the front of the screen. I was watching earlier. Yeah, you couldn't believe us, right? There seemed to be this smudge on Tom O'Brien's chin. Has he grown some facial hair? 
Oh, oh, you're talking about the smudge. <laughs> yeah, he's. I believe so. I believe that's oh, okay. what it is. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Well, I am in umbrella. The symbol is A is in Alpha, M is in Mary, B is in Boy, A is in Alpha. And you are you are long? I'm along. I bought. Are you calls. long with calls? You do have calls, okay? Also, oh. so, just let me tell folks what we're looking at. We're looking at umbrella, and it's very it's so fascinating. I had not even seen the symbol for quite a while. And this morning, very early, I thought, no, I, I just, I, I don't keep um, the, uh, I, I don't anymore, I have, well, for a long time, I don't have a TV in my office, I just decided I did not need it, it's just a bunch of noise, I, 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 I so I went and I looked at the uh, CNBC earlier this morning, and then I saw the symbol go, AMBA going by, and I thought, gosh, I have not seen that symbol in ages, and out of I can't believe that you've just called and you've asked about AMBA because I, the first thing I, I would normally do is I'd go back into the office and I'd start uh, typing in AMBA and I'd be doing the notation and said, I haven't looked at what has it done and all that. And here you call. Very nice. That's, yes, what that's I a, did is I, I got in on the 25th. I wanted to get in on the 24th, but when it gapped up, I said, oh, okay, I'll wait till it pulls back and it never did. But right. I didn't, the move on the 25th because it moved up through the 200-day exponential moving average. And I said, well, I really have to get in, just in memory of Basil. Very good. Okay, thank you. So listen, this is what I'm looking at. I, I don't know if you can actually see my charts right now, but what I've just drawn is two cup formations. And now I'm about to put in a declining trend line. And why the reason why it struck me as very, being important right now is that although the cup formations have different time uh, number of bars from the left side to the right side, the pattern is a very important pattern because if you look, if you just half close your eyes, you'll see that you've got a rising low from the low that was made right there on the yep. on the 23rd of January to the to the low that was made just recently on the 18th of April that's number one and if you sort of half close your eyes you'll see that the MACD which usually should follow the green line the nine period differential usually tracks very well the price of whatever it is you're following and it's done that beautifully but what's really important is that every time it's gone to its most recent highs uh, going back to the uh, November the stochastic has just briefly gone above 80%, and then with the price, it's plummeted. But if you're looking closely at this, you'll see that this is really the start of a move to the upside in um, in the technicals based on the MACD. And the stochastic's at 91%, and it looks, based on the histogram, those little vertical lines in the moving average convergence divergence, that the price is still expanding between those moving averages. So if the stochastic at 91% this time doesn't suddenly plummet under 80%, there's a really good chance that the last time it went to peak A, B, C, D, E, and then a peak F, and then plummeted, this time it's only in leg C. And this trend line now, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger because people looking at on Tiger TV can see, it's today it's just broken above that trend line. So I think you've got yourself something very... So you said you also have calls or you just have calls? Well, I have calls, and uh, I bought 5750s back on the 25th. So I'm up about 70% at this point. But as you know, when you play options, if it doesn't double, you sort of say, gee, that's very uninteresting. Okay. And uh, with the front month, I believe I've got probably about probably 16, 17 days left before it expires. So there certainly is time. My question is, what would you put? At, would you put a price target on this at this point? Yes. What I would do is I'd put two price targets. One is the 200 period simple moving average, which is, which is at 58.84. So that would give you an extra point on your options. Probably that's going to be uh, uh, maybe another 27 or 32 percent, maybe, if, if it goes up another point. Now, what I am looking at is, because it's only in C, the reason why I see two positions, one is if leg C is continuing tomorrow, no, I'm not going to change my mind. 
I'm going to say that if it hits this particular target of the 200 period moving average, I would take off a certain amount. I don't know how many you've got, but I would take maybe, I don't know if I'd take off half, I'd take off at least a third. I try to keep the other, and the other third, the pullback that comes, as you know, the pullback from peak C is then an anticipation that there should, if everything stays in place as it is now, technically good, there should be at least a D. And I'm saying to you, if you can, if you can stretch this out, and if it gets to a peak C, um, and it, it turns out that peak C is still in the same leg that takes you to that 58, 50-ish area, then what I would say to you is, I would, I would, as it's rallying, you're going to get your very best price in leg C, and then I'd just be very patient, wait for D, and I would even say to you, Bob, if it pulls back in D and it takes out today's low, that is the low of 56.84, in that area, somewhere between 56.75 and 55.86, you might find that it's forming another little base based on the 120-minute chart. You could put those options back again and get a full a full run to leg D. I believe it will make a D, even though it's under the previous high. It's got a very nice pattern technically. Uh, congratulations. I have to kudos to you because the entry that you gave actually was a pretty difficult one because it did have a very large arch formation, a beautiful symmetry. They said if it didn't hold, it could very quickly fall back under 50. So you, one, you you got in, and that's great. And one thing that's very interesting is the open interest on this. At this strike price, there are almost 2,000 contracts out. And uh, until you get way away from this price, everybody's only at a couple of hundred or sometimes only 20 or 30. Was that so, one block? Was that a, just one block that came in at that, pri at that uh, level? Well, it wasn't my block. Okay, because if it was a single block, someone is really optimistic, and that could be a hedge fund of sorts. So you don't always know which side, because that could be uh, to ameliorate a short position. You never know. But I, I right. like that, and I also like the fact that it then went higher after that was implemented. Uh, yes. And in fact, I'll go back in the history and see uh, what the trade size was. Right. Now, one other thing that I want you to say to you is this. Um, what do they, I want you to ask you, what do they do? Do you know? Yes, I do. They, they make these nifty little video computer chips. You buy a GoPro camera, and it always has an AMBA chip in it. And it's, it's sort of like, right. like, yeah. it's like, like, it's like the electronic film that makes those small cameras work. So is this, so this is in the semiconductor area? The semiconductor company, you know, oh, okay. 600 employees, and uh, they... Uh, they make these things, and they're noted for saying, by the way, we're shipping a new version of the product. The price isn't going up 40% better. And I hear music. Wow. Yes. So, hey, congratulations, Bob. Let me know how it went. Okay. Thank you for calling. Folks, we'll be back. Dow's up 20. S&P's unch. We'll be If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, folks, we're back. You know, this I just got an email. Uh, uh, this is fantastic. we got to say thank you to Tom O'Brien. Tom has got uh, this uh, program all over the world. Uh, the TFNN video is just superb. And here I am. I've got um, an email from Al. He says, uh, listening at the airport in Johannesburg on my way to London and then to Newark. That's New Jersey, folks. Uh, thanks for the mention when I was in Namibia, uh, Al. So, I mean, this is great. I, yeah, I did the same thing when I was in Israel, when I was in Australia. I just, it's what a fantastic medium. And it's, it's, um, it's not easy to put together. So just going back, so I said that SPG was, I'm going to do a little more work on the SPG in a moment, but I want you to show the next question that was asked was uh, by Jason, if I can find it. Oh, that was a mistake. Yep, there it is. Uh, was... SC is, is Santander uh, consumer and loans. They have a big auto loan portfolio that continues to be risky. The chart has looked bad for a long time now. It looks like they just got bushed. Oh, busted. Uh, for, I thought he was going to say bushback. Busted for inflating auto loan income application as well. So we've got SC right here. I was going to do the, I didn't have a chance. I was going to do the notation. I'll just do it real quickly here. Yeah, always have to go back far to see exactly where it starts. Otherwise, you can start your wave count and you missed by a couple of bars, the real low. This is the real low right here in Santander back in March a year ago. I believe, yep, A. And then it has an inside. So that's an A. And then what happens is that A stalls and starts another little A there. Then it goes to a B and it goes to a C, Chapman wave notation, D, and then it goes to an E. So I think for now, Santander, um, Santander Consumer USA Holdings, that's what the title is. Uh, SC is the symbol, 1277, down four cents. I'm saying there's a good chance that you're forming the arch formation, a rather large arch formation. However, there are a couple of things that I immediately pick up, and that pickup it says that you've got to be careful here because there's a there's an up channel. So all I'm going to say is I'm I think you're right about the risk. I think you're right about the risk with SPG. And if I get a chance today or tomorrow, I'm going to do the retail to show you that Costco and a cup just a handful of retails are doing fabulously actually so let me just say yes i agree i'll do a little more work tomorrow because we've got a caller waiting i want to go straight to george in new york george how are you good morning basil how are you today i'm very well thank you very good yeah uh basil today i wanted to look at uh noble norders nvo nvo right okay there we go. Okay, so this is Nova Nordisk AS ADR. This is a um, they are they were Swedish. Where where were they? They Danish. Where were they? Nova Nordisk. Um, uh, overseas. Well, you know, I know it is a Scandinavian company. Scandinavian. Okay. All right. So what we're looking at, folks, is NVO 
Trading at 38.78, up, uh, up 48 cents. Yeah, probably Norway. I just picked someone up from Norwegian Airlines mm -hmm. the other day. I didn't even know there was a Norwegian mm -hmm. Airlines. Okay, so you like it as it stands right now at 38.78? Well, what I like about it is I felt it was starting to go to an undervalued stage. Uh, okay. Presently, to me, I have this as about a... Uh, a 42 to a $50 stock. Okay. Based on its medium P.E., it's a $42 stock. So we're trading right now. You know, it was bottoming out at 34 And I saw, saw I was been monitoring it. And, it, you know, it's a healthy company. So, so the only they... problem is, of course, you know, since, um, since the election... You know, when Clinton first came out against the drug companies and all, right, um, right. the sector in general has been in decline. And they've been bottoming out and they've been reducing prices or you get a problem like Valiant. So now, um, you know, I've been watching the bottoming process and I am uh, just targeting certain companies like Nova Nordisk. And which you know I'm already involved with Valiant, which I picked up again right. the other day at about 9.46. Yeah, you know, I, it, it's become a little quiet. Nothing much has been said. And as long as it's quiet, I think that's going to benefit that company. It wants to be under the radar right now, Valiant. Well, again, they just sold a couple of skincare products for $220 million, which they just applied to their debt. So slowly, slowly, they're working down the debt. But the as long as they're not is, working, which the analysts don't talk about out on the street, is that at least they have a constant cash flow coming in. Because and they don't want to mess with that, because that's really that's been their, their real bread and butter for so long. Yeah, absolutely. So my point to you is they could service the debt because they have a constant cash flow coming in, and they did now renegotiate their bonds, which they brought out a little further. So it gives them enough time for the cash flow to pay off the bond. I so, myself. So what I what I wanted to again, mention in is my what, opinion. Okay, but what I wanted to mention is that your uh, Nova Nordisk trading at thirty eight point eighty up eight fifty cents today. This is a very nice pattern, and as long as the stochastic, which is at eighty nine percent, holds in the eighty five, eighty three, above eighty percent, but I prefer it up in the middle eighty three, eighty percent area. Right now, the 39.26 200 period moving average is about is is being crossed to the downside by the 200 period simple moving average. I like when the 200 period exponential is starting to move up. Okay. Right now, it's still just a little bit down. It's it's sort of flattening out. So I'm saying that it was because you have patience. Mm -hmm. I like the way the daily is acting. I like the way the weekly is acting. Just be prepared that there could be a pullback towards the 36 area, and I'd get a little concerned if it actually broke 35, 50 support. I'd say, uh-oh, you could be right, but it's going to take a little longer. As of standing right now, it says if everything is, if everything we're looking at is in play and this very quiet strength in NVO continues. The stair mm -hmm. step says that the, the very ugly candle, that huge down candle from the October of 2016 with a high of 41.35, that's 41 to 40, 40, 40 to 42 would be the area that I'd be looking at for very strong resistance. And the 200 period weekly is at 42.86. It probably will do a lot of digesting before it gets there. I like the I like last month's candle in the monthly. Um, I, I think you're right. I think you, this is definitely an, an improving stock. And if they can if they can very quietly just produce the goods, don't worry about the or any news that comes out. You know that 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 politically what could happen to any of the uh, the pharmaceuticals or biotechs or anything in that area. This looks like it's ignoring it and it's doing well. Good eye, I must say. You had mentioned it before yeah. and it's starting to do very nicely. Thank you. Yeah, well, I just have it on the radar right now, presently. I haven't gone into the position at all. Uh, I did an analysis on it. And I'll tell you, the only thing I was um, hesitant about was I think I had it earmarked that there was a gap at around 34, 
36. I forgot when the yeah, date 34, was on. Yeah, at, at about just under 35, yeah. But in fact, there right. are, the, because so, it's... I so just I wanted to say... Just, uh, that, a little concerned with that. Yeah, but th this does trade with gas because it's an overseas company. The data will always show that. But that, that would be the support I'd be looking at. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for calling. Hey, hey, good, Pastor, good eye. If you get a chance, could you look at NVIDIA also where, uh, where you next. see the bottoming? Hold Thanks. on, and we'll do it together next. Hold on. Oh, wonderful. I'll, Thanks, I'll be back. Dows up 23. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Learn how to trade options with swim lessons brought to you by td ameritrade think or swim next on tfnn folks we're back dows up 20 s and p's down one so we're on with george and i just wanted to go through this real quickly because i got a bunch of uh, uh, uh emails that i'd like to get to so george nvidia yes had a, a little bit a little bit bigger move than i thought from 96 to 100 just over 106 in the balance back but I'm still looking at lower lows and lower highs as the potential here. So okay. I would I would just I would just say that if Nvidia by Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, if it's taking mm -hmm. up one the 100 support, I think it's going to be retesting the the lows that were made back in the 100 area. And what would be very positive if you're looking at it positively, and I must say my weekly and monthly charts really suggest it needs a, a longer time out. Um, and yeah. I'm thinking that. If it breaks 108, it's 103.88 uh, right now. If it goes over 108, I have to kind of reconsider and say, you know what? Can I go back to 120.92? I don't think in this time frame. I think looking out, NVIDIA is a fantastic company. I just think it's got a potential for a longer time out. That's what I just wanted to tell you. Okay. And I just wanted to tell you quickly that I think we have earnings May 9th on NVIDIA. 
at the moment. Oh, well, great. Okay. That's good okay. to know. Thank you, George. Thanks for calling. Always very interesting. Well. So, thank you. So I just wanted to go. Greg wanted to know about CX. It's in my newsletter. We've been trying to buy uh, C uh, Max uh, Mexican Cement Company on a dip towards the 912 area, and it just didn't do it. It did it every other time, but it didn't do it once we put it in. Um, it's acting very well. It's up five cents at 938. Now, there's something that I just wanted to quickly talk about here. There's a technique called the Chapman wave overlapping wave, and that meant that the peak C that was made right there in the week of the 7th of uh, April should see a leg D, and that leg D should go nicely above peak C, and then it should come back and retest the high that was made, and that high would be at 9.62. So, um, so the you've got the core position. We haven't got that extra position, um, and so... You're in at 8.83. That's great. I'm just going to say you've probably, I'm expecting another leg up to go to D. If you want to grab it here at 9.34 and take a little bit of a risk of 20 cents or something like that with the expectation that it will go to D, then that's fine. I, because I've got a newsletter, I have to be a little careful. I don't, I don't, I should have done it right away and said, let's just grab it at 9.18 or whatever it is and ride it to leg D. But I thought it keeps pulling back, but it didn't this time. But yes, CX trading at 935, I think, is going to go to 963, which would make leg D or a little higher. So I hope that helps you. Uh, next, next thing, just JP Morgan. I had questions about JP Morgan. JP Morgan stalling, Goldman Sachs stalling, bank, uh, not as much as, the, as uh, JP Morgan. Um, bank of America is still looks fabulous looking out. Short term, it's just got a real problem. I think the banks need to digest the big gains. Visa I was asked about. Um, Visa is acting very well, and that goes with Costco. This is very, isn't it? Isn't it uh, Visa? So the people are buying. And they aren't all buying at Amazon. Look, yes, Costco acting very well. Um, so I'll do more of that tomorrow. I just want you to touch on it today because uh, it was a quest. Some of you had questions still from yesterday, not knowing that I'd be. And Walmart was a question. Uh, Walmart, yeah, you see, Walmart's acting well now. It didn't act very well going into the uh, uh, end of last year. So I'll talk about the retail tomorrow. I'll talk about retail. I'll talk about I want to go through, but I have Apple's earnings. I want to talk about a bunch of things that are affecting us right now. So I just want you to do that before we run out of time. Don't forget, great programming coming up all day. Uh, Andy Hecht uh, has a new uh, newsletter coming out. So um, just keep keep on here at TFNN, and we will keep this as an educational network, one of the finest that I know of. Um, let me just do one other. Oh, just a real summation. Um, we are, we have started a short position in the Dow because it's just been consolidating, gone back to a short position, I should say, just to start a position. I think that it's the QQQs. We're waiting within days. I think that the Qs are about to have at least a short-term pullback, but they might go higher before then. So don't start shorting prematurely. Meantime, back at the ranch. Uh, have a great day, and I will see you, uh, see you tomorrow morning. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN. N.